Hey guys, welcome back to the channel with more of The Expanse. This is Season 1, Episode 7. We've only got four episodes left this season, including this one. And uh, curious to see how they'll all start to wrap things up a little bit. Uh, though I think they might be more inclined to just go full speed and then leave us on a cliffhanger. Um, last time, everybody on the Rosinate, they got back together and are going to look for... Julie Mao, who they think is Lionel Polanski. Well, they think, they know it's a code name, but they don't know actually know that it's Julie Mao. Uh, Holden got kicked off, Holden? No, Miller got kicked off of the police force, security task, security task force for uh, uncovering the truth, and uh, Anderson Dawes had already paid off Shadid, Shadid, so he got kicked off. Uh, I'm curious to see if and when they'll interact with each other, Miller and the group on the Rosinate, because I feel like Miller is still going to go after this story. He wants to find out the truth, um, but he doesn't have any resources, so I don't know. I don't know if he'll drag Mus with him into this. Um, she still has her credentials. Uh, if I was Shadid and I knew about their history, I might even kick Mus off the force, uh, just so that, or just limit her access to everything. Just so that uh, Miller wouldn't couldn't use her to further his investigation. Um, don't know if she'll do that, but yeah, uh, curious to see how they continue this story. And if you want to watch the full reaction, check out Patreon in the link in the description below. But let's get started. Brass sends me cases like Julie's, but they don't want them solved. The only way this ship will pass for a freighter is if no one looks close enough. If anyone comes on board... They can't check every ship. They have no reason to board us. Just got pinged by a ranging laser. They're just giving us a little love tap. Let us know they're watching. Huh. What if that love tap turns into a target lock? We need to be ready. Right. <sighs> so much stress. I don't know if they're coming for us now. How did someone as smart as you end up on the Canterbury? I failed upwards. Hey, y'all. Why are we broadcasting? What are you talking about? No one's broadcasting anything. Yeah, we are. What? He's right. Amos, check it out. He's not listening. Amos. Ah, uh, there is a rift. Did someone sneak on board? They did. What? Just checking in, ma'am. No, I wasn't murdered in the last 30 <laughs> seconds. I'd feel a lot better if I had some people on the ground. Hello, this actress, too. Holden. Holden. I'm Christian Abasarala, UN deputy undersecretary. <sighs> is this about Jimmy? It is. I've been stealing codes and tech from Tycho for two years now. Then why are you on our ship? Wait, is this the spy that she took control of? a little too deep in Fred Johnson's cookie jar. I had to get off of Tycho before we launched a boarding skiff. Of course. Put him in the airlock. Look, wait a Fresh minute. Fresh air what? it is. Just wait a minute. Keep wait. him there. Disable the control so he can't get out. Just wait a minute. Let's hope we don't open the wrong Just door. Just wait. Look, look. I don't want to get picked up by any Mickey patrol, and I know you guys don't want that either. What do you know about us? Detective Shuffle. Oh. Like some bad virus you just can't shake. You all remember Mr. Miller. He used to work for us, but now he's just one of us. You told me that I was the patron saint of lost causes. You remember that? Uh. I think I may have found another one in you. Not yet, but we are getting closer, huh? Maybe you haven't lost everything yet. You'll know your way home. And it will welcome you. Brave woman. Being part of a family co-op, it's hard enough for one husband to get along with me. <laughs> Can we stop with the bullshit Small tag. now? Yeah, I, I felt like she was sick of it. I had a little left it. about how charming your home is. You're here because you think he had something to do with it. He would never. Oh, no, wait, I know this one. My boy was a little angel, 
Gosh, she likes pushing buttons. Insect. Oh, if you'd just seen what a wonderful child he was. And I thought we were done with the bullshit. Why did he leave your little paradise here? You haven't told me he's dead. You're dancing around it. <sighs> Jimmy's alive. <sighs> Rocinante, you have been flagged for inspection per MCR trade regulation A066. Do not deviate from your present course. If you do, you will be fired upon. Oh, boy. You think I won't space you? I'm oh, pretty sure you will. Don't change anything, though. You made me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Future door is still just a shoulder and it's down. He's got no choice but to be reckless, really. What? Is that not a... That ship you're looking for, Anubis, whatever, it never showed up here. But the funny thing is, a short-range shuttle from that ship did. Anubis 1A is still here on Eros racking up dock fees. Kinda interested to know what's in it for you, amigo. Hmm. I have the facts about your son, but I don't understand him. I think you're full of shit, lady. Jimmy is my A lot of the time she is. You put all your hopes on your son? I pressured mine to join the Marines, or I wouldn't pay for his education. First step in a career of public service. That's why he was in Callisto during the insurrection. That took his life. I've been wanting for someone to come around and tell me that it was all a terrible mistake, that my son is still alive. I didn't. That's not something I usually lead with. It's something she uses to manipulate people. Though I'm not, I feel like she's being, I feel like she's being genuine here, but I'm not entirely sure given how she's acted in the past. All right, Knuckle Dragger, come to daddy. You get the help. Congratulations. Oh. The Mickeys have been known to disguise their attack ships when they're doing covert ops. They use a special uh -huh. set of codes that tell other Martian ships that they are out there, they are doing the nasty, and to get lost. How do you know all this? I'm a good spy. <sighs> Which is why I don't want to mess with the Mickeys any more than you guys do. Donkey balls. Did you just say donkey balls? <laughs> you guys give that skiff the proper set of codes, and they have to back off. It should be in an operations locker or somewhere on this deck, somewhere right here. Right, right here. Right here, where? You gotta have a code book. Where did you get that key? From Lopez. Open says me. 24 digit security code! Donkey balls. <laughs> Damn. Say goodbye if this thing is as big as you think it is. You need someone to watch your back. A partner. Okay, better do this one alone. You were alone in that airlock. Okay, come with me. He doesn't want to get her mixed up in all this. He was gonna take over for us. The way we raised him, he grew up thinking he was alive because the land needed him. Hmm. The day before his 18th birthday, and I told him to get as far away from this place as he could. And that if he didn't go, then I would. Because I couldn't stand to watch what we were doing to him anymore. Wow. You were right to open the cage. Jimmy still hasn't found his place, but at least he's free. He's living a very different life than what he was trained for. You kill the power of the magnetic seal, the backup in that locker is gonna kick in and keep it shut. That's why I'm gonna kill the power source first, so the backup doesn't trigger. It's a good idea, but there's not enough time. You underestimate so... my ability to break things. <laughs> Any Martians come through that airlock, we subdue and take them prisoner. 
Nobody's dying, so they'll have a chance to paint your mothership. <laughs> yeah. That ain't my plan. I'm talking about the Mickeys coming through that airlock to take us down. You logged the distress call, Holden. Welcome to the churn. Naomi was right to be afraid. Hey there, fellas. Uh, welcome to the neighborhood. See you extended <laughs> out your docking tube, though there might be a little <sighs> problem with the link up. Uh, we're still working out some kinks. We're about to have company. He's gonna knock him out. Oh, he's gonna. Sh I will take you down before I let you take them down. You got a clean shot, back of the head. Take it if you need it. <sighs> hey, listen, we gotta, we gotta let them in now, or we get a bomb on our home. I've got it. What? You got it? I've got it. <laughs> go, go, go! Oh man, this is gonna be tight. They might get in here. Sorry to be such a pain, boys, um, but uh, our power problems, they've been so uh, ubiquitous. Ubiquitous and mendacious and polyglottal. <laughs> like a couple of donkey balls. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Received and understood, Rocinante. You get those comms checked out when you hit port. Oh man, Amos is kind of a loose cannon though. Son of a bitch! Can you believe that? Damn, I'm good! That one down. <laughs> Amos is kind of a loose cannon. Hey, Amos, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm going to get a hold of the Mickeys. And a converted MCRN gunship with a uh, transponder code supplied by Fred Johnson. So, your analysis of his character notwithstanding, I've activated a black ops team. <sighs> Did he get to finally pee? Yay! Are you anything like that animal? You got top sign. Amos, you call him? No. Good. I don't care what you're involved in. If you can look at yourself in the mirror and still decide that you're gonna toss me into space because I'm inconvenient to you, then at least you can do me the respect Telling me that it's gonna happen because I am not an animal either. No answer. All right, guys. Uh, last episode, Miller got screwed over hard, and then we got to see we had some got some insight into. Um, what his thought process was, uh, this episode with him, that scene on the train with him was great. Um, he was just like talking to himself, recording a message for Julie's parents. And he said that he wanted to believe that he was good at this once, his detective work. And that definitely serves as part of his motiv motivation now. Like he definitely wants to serve, uh, save Julie, uh, rescue Julie. And he also wants to prove to himself that he is good at this. Like he wasn't just skating by and like taking bribes and like doing nothing. Um, that he actually is good at this, good at something, I guess. And he goes back to Dawes. He's kind of a loose cannon, nothing to lose kind of thing. And Dawes kind of sees him as powerless now that he's not Star Helix. And, um, yeah, it's really fascinating. But, um, yeah, he thinks this new drive of Miller's might actually serve his cause going forward, even though he tried to kill him. But, uh... I <laughs> Dawes gets some great lines throughout this series. This time it was like, maybe you haven't lost anything. Maybe you haven't lost everything yet. When you have, you will know your way home, and it will welcome you. So, it'll be interesting to see if that happens. Uh, but yeah, Miller goes back to Julie's apartment and sees the fly bird flying outside again. And I was just like, is it... My first thought was, is it like a machine, just like the hamster was? Um, because, yeah, they didn't... But then, like, the, for the rest of the episode, they didn't show the bird. And I was just like, well, what was the significance of the bird? It, like, it seemed important. What? Um, but yeah, it would have been a... I feel like it's... Is there a, great, a re big reveal coming out about that? I'm not sure. But um, yeah, he hears about the Anubis. He said Anubis, and I can't stop it now. Anubis's shuttle. And um, 
from his friend, and he's going to go to Eros to track it down. He takes Julie's necklace, uh, maybe to return to her, or maybe it's just to remind himself why he's doing this, or both. Um, but yeah, I knew there was something screwy when I was... Uh, with my thoughts of about the episode when I first watched it, um, it was in editing. I realized that I thought the I thought Miller took the casino chips from Julie's place, and I was like, "What? Why would she have casino chips?" But he actually takes it from his own place, so that was something that was like confusing me during the episode. I was like, "I feel like I'm missing something," and in editing, I caught it. I think that was the only thing I really missed. Um, but yeah, for me, I was just like the entire that that threw me off a lot because <laughs> I didn't think of it correctly. Um, but I guess, yeah, I don't, I didn't really recognize, um, Miller's home is the thing in the first place. So, yeah, they don't really show him in his home that much. So I guess it's okay. Um, but yeah, he takes off his hats, hangs it up. Um, like he's taking off the thing that he tried to use to look like an earther to pretend. Is this to, like, did, did he take Dawes seriously when Dawes told him that he's everything that Julie Mao hated, like a belter who turns on their own kind? Is this him becoming, trying to become a better person um, for the belters, for himself? And Miller, I mean, I'm starting to like him a little bit more, just, like, he actually thinks about Mus's, uh well-being and says that he has to do this alone. Like, she was ready to go with him and it actually seems like she still has like strong feelings for him and it's not reciprocated which paints his actions earlier in the season like very differently uh still don't like the way he treated her in the past but uh i commend him for not dragging her along and i don't know if must knows that he's he i don't i don't think must knows that he loves julie mao but um yeah i don't know <laughs> anyway um, the whole storyline with the Rasanate was really fun to watch. Uh, in the end, I don't feel like the actual stop, like, doesn't affect the story in many ways, but it does a lot of storytelling with our characters, uh, shows the rift between Naomi and Amos starting to, like, have repercussions, uh, introduce, introduces us to Kenzo, and, yeah, it's, the, Amos is kind of a loose cannon now, like, he was a good soldier before, like, following Naomi's orders no matter what. But even before he decides, like, hey, I'm going to put holes in these suckers if they try to board us. Uh, like, when Naomi and Holden were talking, like, he's paying close attention. Like, trying to pick up on what she's saying and how she's acting. So, yeah, excellent acting uh, all around. Um, especially by Amos' actor, though. And Kenzo, he's apparently, like, the same spy Christian wanted to use. When he first said he was a corporate spy, I was like, is he? And then, no, that's not right. And then they confirmed it later. Um, but, yeah, corporate spy... And he seems to be very knowledgeable about a lot of different things, especially about the Martian thing. That's surprising. But somehow he thought it was a good idea to try to contact his friends on Eros. Like, how could you think that was a good idea? I think... I'm not sure. Like, they said Naomi was, uh, like, very smart and she was, like, finicking... Finish, finicking? She was doing something with the... Uh, <laughs> with the ship so that sh they could sense... Um, she said that the Martian's ship doesn't sense others as like uh as, as threatened threats or something and so maybe if she didn't finagle with the controls or whatever they wouldn't have picked up the beacon from kenzo but the martians clearly took note of it like how did he think this was a good idea to try and contact maybe he had another idea oh 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 maybe he did this in the hopes that he could gain their trust by doing... I don't know. That doesn't make sense either. If he just wanted to be smuggled to Eros, and he thought they were going to Eros, why not just wait until they were there and just sneak off and contact them then? Like, it just seems like a very nonsense move. Um, but I guess... I don't know if we'll find out more about that. Um, but yeah, it didn't, it, it didn't make sense for me to understand why he's, like, transmitting... Uh, why he risked transmitting. Uh, but yeah, while he's in that airlock, he overrode the system in there, and he was just like... Did he say mouth breather? I don't remember. He, he's referred to Amos as, like, some, like, dumb person. And uh, I think he was going to take him out until Amos told him, like, he gets the help. And, yeah, Kenzo's very capable. Uh, and he tips them off about how to get out of that jam. Uh, Alex is kind of hilarious uh, with his... Uh, yeah, like, we're very ubiquitous. And I forget the other two words. And then it's like, like a couple of donkey balls. <laughs> Amos like, did you just say donkey balls? That was earlier in the episode. Um, but yeah, uh, 
Kenzo, he did help. I hope the rest of the crew doesn't really trust him just yet based off of that. Like, he did help. He was helping himself just as much as he was helping them. Um, but yeah, they don't know about his eye. They don't know about anything about him, really. And since they're not going to Eros, I don't know what they'll do with him exactly. And he he asked Holden to, like, tell him if they were going to kill him or... Yeah, and Holden didn't say anything, which I guess is implication enough that he's not going to get killed. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and he's Christian's spy, apparently. Like, she wanted to use him as... Um, to spy on Fred Johnson, which he apparently already was. But yeah, speaking of Chris Jen, she's... I don't know how to pronounce her name. Chris Jen? Chris... Chris can I just... Is it Christian? Is it just Christian? Chris Jen, she's off to the farm where Holden's eight parents are meeting with Elise. We get a lot of world building in that conversation. We learn about, like, family co-ops and, like, land rights. And we learn about Holden and Elise learns that James is still alive, so... Christian wanted to see if he was a terrorist, but uh, is convinced by what she hears that he isn't, uh, which is correct. But the undersecretary guy, he er, he has already sent people to take Holden out at Eros. Luckily, he's not headed there, but that's not a storyline that's not gonna that's gonna get dropped anytime soon. So very curious to see how that all works out. Uh, I don't know how. I'm very curious to see how all like people's names will get cleared. I don't know who. Still don't know who's actually behind all of this. Um, I have one or two theories that don't make full sense. I mean, I don't. They could make sense, but I'm just like, eh, like there's nothing. I don't want to. Yeah, I feel like well, we're still too early to know the full full story, definitely. But yeah, uh, enjoy this episode. I feel like. After the first two episodes of the season, episode three was when I got like, I was like, oh, this is good. And then four and five, I was like, okay, this is great. And yeah, looking forward to the last, there's we're only three episodes left of the season. So uh, stick around. We're going to do all three seasons, of course, but <sighs> getting through these one at a time. All right, guys, if you want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Next episode is also up on Patreon right now as well. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.